a really great relationship. It doesn't sound like a really great arrangement. And yet they still want it. So, back to Samuel, go ahead and provide it for them. And as we'll sort of hear over the next few weeks, this kingship that Samuel helps them renew lasts for about 400 years. And over those 400 years, there's really not a whole lot of good that comes out. The kings do exactly as God has told them to do. So, these people who have been in the wilderness forever and are feeling disgruntled and lost and they're not really sure who to believe or what to believe, they're looking for like this cure all. They think this king will solve all their problems, this king will make everything all happy and good in the long run. But they, they realize, as we often do when we think that we can solve our problems all on our own, that we can't. That God is really the only cure all that we have. So even when things get tough and we feel like God is not listening and we turn to God, God is still there. God is ready for us when we come back. God will give us second chances and or give the chances if we need it because God, that's who God is. God is a new king sitting on the throne, barking commands and taking things from us. That's not, that's not what God does. Because God is there for us when we need God. And even when we feel like we don't, God's still there. So I think maybe the lesson for us is that even in all those times when we think that we can do it on our own, God will let us try, but there are usually consequences, usually negative consequences, that come from that sort of attempt at being up with God. I think that's, that's the lesson these people in Samuel have, or so maybe we'll start to learn over, over the course of their journey. So we move from these Old Testament, long time ago communities that are trying to figure it out to this New Testament community that's still trying to figure it out. So Jesus comes into town, and there's that passage in one of the prophets that says, a prophet is never welcome in his hometown. This is sort of a case study in that. So Jesus comes back into his hometown, his mother, his family is there. These are people who know him. The scribes are in town from down in Jerusalem. So there's a lot of people sort of checking out what Jesus is up to. And they think it's nuts. They think it's crazy. Because it looks crazy, right? The things he's doing are not normal. They're not the accepted, expected way of living and eating and talking and loving people. So he's already made his way around the gallery. He's cast out some demons. He's done a lot of healing. He's done a lot of feeding. He's eaten with people that most of the rest of the community sort of excludes or ignores. So he's already proven himself to be a little different. So maybe it's not so surprising that when he comes to town, people are not really sure what to think, what to believe about him. Because even in our own day, when there's new situations or things that make us uncomfortable or things that are unfamiliar, we react in ways that usually that we wouldn't normally react. So his family looks like they're calling him crazy, but maybe there's a level of protection there too. They realize that the rest of the town is not sure what's going on, and they're trying to protect Jesus. They say, hey, come home quietly and blow we'll, like we'll all be there. And we know that's not what Jesus says. Jesus is like going to come home quietly and you know pack up what he's doing. And the rest of the community, the rest of the town, thinks that he's possessed by Satan, which in the first century was a really big deal. That's why Jesus casts out those demons and sends the demons into the pig and off the cliff. Because being possessed by demons just wasn't, wasn't good. It was, it was a way of being very quickly and being excluded from whatever you were in. So, Maybe it is a little crazy though, right? Like, he's talking about love and he's 
talking about forgiveness and acceptance and reconciliation. And all of these ideas and concepts and ways of being that are just not the way most people are acting in that way. So they're not sure what to think of them, they're not sure what to do. Because this message that he's spreading is just so radical. Right? We call it radical love, radical hospitality. They just don't want to do it. But that doesn't mean that we, even those times when we're not sure what to do with it either, should do it up. Because God is still there with us, sort of leading us with the Spirit's help to try to understand this crazy message that he was ascending. So when we have new people walk through the door, we welcome them with love and we offer a place that's a little bit different than what they're getting out there. It's not a bad thing. Sometimes it's a place of, of solace, a place of safety. And that's, that's wonderful if we can do that. So this crazy message is a reordering of priorities. Helping those teams, teaching and preaching to, and healing and meeting with, sort of look at what's important in their life and think about it in a different way. Because we can't control how Jesus works with us. We can't control where he's going to go or how God is going to show up. But I think the, the challenge for us is to just be on the lookout to always notice where God is showing up. And to hold on to and celebrate that there is a little bit of crazy in what we do. There is a little bit of like strangeness to be a place, to be a church that is welcoming and loving. So really quick story about this morning. We had a guest come to you about service. He just moved to town. And he, I went to talk to him after he said that he was just sort of looking around. He might come to town looking for him to get involved in the community. And he said he Googled most liberal Christian traditions. And the Episcopal Church came up on his Google search. And he said, oh, there's a big Episcopal Church in the four corners. I'm going to go there. So what we're doing is working, right? I mean, I had a meeting this week with a couple other pastors, and they said, well, those rainbows have to warm up turn people off. I'm not going to apologize for that. That's who we are, right? Because what we're doing here, here at Zion and Palmyra, as we have sculptured in a larger context, is loving people. Loving people as they are. And that's the message you just decided that is so great, but it's also the message that we need to not be afraid to continue to serve. Amen.